what's the difference between links, internal links, how does this all work? So internal links are literally text links within your articles that should link all your articles together. Now, what effect does this have? A range of benefits. Partly there's relevance. So basically all the pages on your site linking to each other will obviously have their own anchor text where those articles tell you what that related article is about. And that's just good instructions for Google in terms of relevance. And there's not normally a problem with hyper-optimizing internal anchor text. Every now and then people are saying, you shouldn't link with keywords or you should mix it up a bit. And uh, people will debate this a lot. Now it's true when doing off-page link building and getting backlinks from other websites, it looks very suspicious if all your backlinks use the same anchor text, best credit card, best credit card, best credit card in every link around the internet. So you don't want to do that. That's because that's been gained. Google does use that anchor text to understand better what the web page is about and therefore what it should rank for. So long time ago, people realized they could abuse this and basically get hundreds of backlinks all with that keyword rich anchor text and rank for the keyword. So naturally, Google cracked down on that. These days, obviously, you're not meant to do any sort of incentivized link building. So therefore, when you conduct that reach, it's important it looks natural. So yes, you still want the benefit of keyword rich anchor text, but you want to mix that in with a whole other range of anchor text, mainly focusing on the brand name I like to recommend, and then all sorts of variations and different wordings of that same subject area, still vaguely describing what the article is actually. But with internal links, you don't need to worry about that. Is Google really going to penalize you for crafting how your articles all link to each other? It's very unlikely. Every now and then there's an update or the site gets tanked and people start talking about it. is the internal anchor text over optimized. So some debate around that, good arguments for and against. Generally, you can be a lot more aggressive with your internal links than you are with your off page links, but probably still sensible to mix in naturally anyway. And I believe what we're going to see here is actually rewriting lines of text to naturally insert those links. So that's one benefit, showing to Google what your article is about and therefore enable it to rank better for the target keyword. Then we have crawlability and indexing, where basically Google can't rank your pages or discover your pages if it can't find them. So internal links, hopefully that's all sorted anyway with your sitemaps, your menu structure, things like that. But it still helps if you get all your articles to link together. So already you can see from Google's perspective, if you've got this huge mass of articles, but they all link together in a logical way, then you're able to understand the relevance better and you're able to find and identify all these sub niches within the broader category. Now, internal linking is and has consistently been massively underutilized because it's just a bit difficult to do. Obviously, when you're writing a fresh article, you can make a point to link out to all your existing articles. But then, of course, in a few years time, you're going to have your older articles that don't link out to many people than your newer articles linking out to loads of past articles. So it really takes some discipline to actually go back and manually update all those pages to make sure they're all linking out to the freshest content as well as the older content. So it's a bit of a pain and most people just don't do it effectively. So you can use tools like Link Whisper. In the agency, we use Linksy, which is very similar to Link Whisper, but I was able to get an AppSumo lifetime deal and stack up loads of those. So basically when a client starts with us, Yes, fundamentally, we're a link building agency focuses on high quality backlinks, moving up existing pages and improving their rankings. But we always say if your site's much is not fully optimized, then the chances are those backlinks are not going to have the full impact they should do. So we include for free, just as a no brain, we'll optimize your existing content, quite often add in new content to complete your topical cluster. And with that, we include internal linking as well. So we do everything we can to get that page ranking at the same time that we're building those links so that generally most clients around three months down the line see a massive spike in traffic, not just from high quality backlinks, but also from all the other fixes as well. So yes, there are tools that make it easier. Like I say, Link Whisper, Link C. There's a couple of others out there. Here's a really important one for internal linking, and that is topical clustering and content siloing. Now, the whole concept of topical authority is looking a bit vague at the moment with some of the recent Google updates. Certainly, it used to be that a relatively low DR site, so a site without many backlinks, could rank really well in certain niches if they had proved that they were comprehensively the authority on that subject. So that means if they had 400 articles all on a hyper niche subject covering every single variation of question and answer for that niche, then there's a good chance, even if they're a DR20 or 30, they could outrank a lot of major players in the 60s and 70s. And I've definitely observed that before. Certainly in my insurance background, different clients, we were always up against major comparison websites, 80, 90 sites, but we could outrank them very effectively, even as a new company, basically taking a single topic like travel insurance and then breaking it down into all those sub niches of travel insurance. So medical cover, different geographies, different types of buyer, age groups. It goes on, there's easily 100 articles out there 
just for travel insurance. Now that's all very well if you're a small company with a small website focused on one particular niche. But what if you've got multiple niches? What if as a travel insurer, you also sell life insurance or pet insurance? And that's where content siloing comes in. Obviously most blogs on the internet, you can have a micro niche site. Generally people like to branch out and cover all these different sections. Now, if you link all of these together, then it can become very messy very quickly. And that is not what Google wants. Remember, part of the whole point of internal links is helping Google out, allowing it to crawl the site easier, organize that information effectively. And so if all your articles are linking out to all these unrelated articles, then that doesn't work. You end up with this whole spider's web, a website. So you might think it's nice and fluffy, but actually Google wants organization. So the answer is content siloing, where you basically want to isolate and interconnect all your different sub niches. If you like, Let's suppose you have your broader website here, but then within that you have maybe four topics. So we have one topic here, then we have one topic here to make sure I've divided this up correctly, another topic, and then a topic here. Now within these silos or clusters, People are always reusing basically different terminology for the same thing. And it all comes down into that topical authority, semantics, all those variations of the same terminology. It all comes down to clustering and silos, which are basically, again, the same thing. So we don't need to reinvent the wheel on this. If I just change color, let's say we have within these topical clusters, different blog posts. Actually, maybe squares would be better. So we've got all these blogs within each topical cluster addressing different questions, different keywords within that cluster. So I'm always using lawnmowers as an example. So maybe if the website is on lawnmowers, and then maybe this section is just gas lawn, or we could take it out a bit. What if the whole website is about gardening? And then this section is just about lawnmowers or lawn care. So we have all these blog posts in each cluster, which are all addressing a certain, but what most people do when they start out, if they are using categories, first of all, they might go for thin categories and decide they want basically one blog post per category, which is a very bad idea. Again, we're going for grouping and organization. So limit yourself to just a few categories and make sure all your blog posts can be categorized into those categories. So already within WordPress, you should be getting some silo going on because you might have that sub on the menu and you might well have that category archive. But what about links on the page? Bear in mind, page is ranking on Google. Google's going to come in, see that page and then see the links coming out of it. So where do we want those links to go? So let's just change color again. So I'm now going to put internal links in green. So you have your homepage and that links to your cluster. And then within that cluster, within that silo, you want those blog posts to all link to each other. So they can link this way. This one can link back the other. That one can link to that one. So within this category, you want them to be all closely related, all linking to each other very comprehensively. So you end up with this really nice tight cluster. And then in your next cluster, you want the same thing. So these all link together. They link that way and that way, and this way, and that way. Now there are people out there who'll go very deep in working out what is the actual ideal sort of hierarchy, if you like. How should these actually internally link together? Especially with e-commerce, you get people talking how obviously you've got products on the category page, but then that product page should also link back to the category page, things like that. But generally, just as a review, I think this should be of real help to the majority of you who are not at that level. You just need the fundamentals that work. So this is 80, 90% of the way there anyway. And so all these should link together. And the same thing for these other categories, they'll have their own subjects that all interlink as well. And you'll notice I mentioned isolation in this. That's because you don't want to then do, we'll stick with the green for internal links you don't then want to cross promote your categories. So if you start doing this, then this just becomes a mess. No longer this tight internal linking structure. So I know it's complicated. There'll always be exceptions. It's quite difficult to have that discipline, but this is just the overview, the kind of theory, the ideal that we're going towards. Now, when it comes to siloing, people do think about the site architecture as well. If I just switch to text, that basically means we can have domain com slash category slash post, while a lot of us start off with domain.com slash post. So if we do gardening com slash lawnmowers, best lawn for small gardens versus name com slash best lawn for small gardens. Let's take it down a bit so you can see it. Okay, so hopefully this makes sense. We've got domain com slash category slash post or a real world example, gardening.com slash lawnmowers slash best lawnmower for small guns or domain.com slash post, which is gardening.com slash best lawn for small guns. So how much do we care about this kind of URL structure, this site architecture for topical authority, content clustering and silo? Now it really depends on your overall goals with the website. So generally in the past, I've normally worked with micro niche websites where frankly, the site probably isn't big enough to do this kind of siloing because remember we really want probably at least 20 articles in each category so like i say if you're doing a big financial comparison website then you may well want insurance banking credit cards all those different subcategories 
So for a big website like that, this definitely does make sense. But for a smaller website, quite a lot of time, you're fine with this. Can you change it later? Yes, but as I keep saying, remember that when you set that URL, Google is going to start aging that URL. The average position one result is two to three years old. And if you change your URLs, then you reset that timer. So yes, you can use redirect. You'll see a bit of a dip in Ahrefs that should then come back up again. But generally speaking, all that Asian authority that you had in that old URL is going to be gone because if you change from this URL structure to this URL structure, Google is basically going to treat that as a new page that's got to earn up that age and authority again. So generally clients will come to me saying, yeah, my URL structure is not great. Should we change it? Frankly, most of the time, better off sticking with your current structure rather than messing it all about and changing it. Now, the saving is you can do what's called virtual silos. So as you can see, we've got domain, category, and then post. And that's exactly what we've got up here. Domain, category, and then posts. You can still do that. You can still do this kind of interlinking without changing your URL structure. If you've just got gardening.com slash guns, if you've just got domain.com slash post, then you can still silo your content using links like this. And you don't need to worry about it being in the URL. You don't have to have this subfolder in the URL, but you can still do the interlinking correctly. So that should still give you the benefits of content silo without making big permanent changes to URLs. Because of course, all of this can be changed anytime. Now, how do you actually set this kind of URL structure in WordPress? It's really quite simple. So let's just create a new category. Most sites I've built today tend to use virtual silos and not mess about with the URL. But this is my net worth site. If we do musicians as a category, add that as a category. And now if we go to all posts, Snoop Dogg is a musician. So we can do quick and just drop him into the musician category. Now already you can see a site like net worth already musician is probably too broad. So we're probably going to do musicians, rappers, etc. And this is where you can get your head stuck in knots, trying to come up with the perfect URL structure. If in any doubt, you can just look at your competitors. As with everything with SEO, correlation is really powerful. So if we do Snoop Dogg net worth, we can see the URL structure that our competitors have used. So celebritynetworth.com I've noticed is very well structured. So this says celebritynetworth.com celebrities slash richest rappers slash Snoop Dogg net. So you've got multiple hierarchies there. Parade.com that's just celebrities slash Snoop Dogg network. Now these are all big uh, entertainment websites probably because all the mass net worth sites have been slapped lately. We've got Supercar Blondie on there as well. You can see also these sites are not actually using any subfolders at all. They just go straight into the post. So generally, I'm not that worried here. But if I were worried, how would I do it? So we want to we'll put this in the musicians category. So therefore, we want this URL to be networkstoday.com slash musicians slash Snoop Dogg Net. So to do that, we go to dashboard and we want to go to appearance, go to settings and then permalinks. Now, you may well have been in here already because when you first launch WordPress, you've got this horrible URL structure that just uses the post ID rather than your keyword rich title. So straight away, when you launch WordPress, you want to change it from plain to post name if it hasn't already been done for you. Or we can do custom structure and we can do that with custom tags. So in this case, the category one, which we can just drop in there. Now at this stage, it's the wrong way around. So let's take that. So we want slash category slash post name and then end slash. So if we now save that, we should be able to go back to our Snoop Dogg and have the correct structure. If we go to posts, all posts, Snoop Dogg net worth, and there we go. Let me just zoom in here. Net worth column slash musicians slash Snoop Dogg net worth. We therefore have a musicians catch and then all the musicians go in there and they can link to each other. Now you might think, how can I do this if I'm using bulk AI? Well, that's exactly why most bulk AI tools, including autoblogging.ai, have got this category ID section. So if we go back to, if I go to edit posts, I can get the categories and get the ID of that category. So if I just hover over the edit button for musicians, I can see down the bottom, it says taxonomy equals category tag ID six. And we should see that here as well. So I know that the category ID for this is six and categorize is normally one. And yes, we can see that there to category and tag ID equals one. So generally when you're using autoblogging.ai, I just put this at one and just blast everything into categorized and then just have that basic domain slash post name. But if I were wanting to silo it properly, then I'd obviously put all my musician keywords in here and then set the category ID to six. And then all my musician articles would go into that category. So if we go back to Snoop Dogg now, we should be able to view that whole category arc. So if I take out Snoop Dogg net worth and just go to slash musicians, then this is that category page. Now, one real challenge I've had before that I still, still see some people asking, is they're saying, I've done my clustering, right? I've got all these categories and they interlink together nicely, but I don't want this page to be a category page. I want this to be more of a product page. So let me give you an example. If we go back to the idea of travel insurance, 
you might want company com slash travel insurance and then have a post that's targeting travel insurance for over 60s and that's good that's really good siloing but if we go to travel insurance and we've just got a whole category archive with all the different travel insurance posts in it that's not what we want we want uh, some full landing page here with calls to action and things like that. So how do you do that? The answer is to go to plugins and install a permalink manager. I mean, there's other ways of doing this. This is my favorite way. And I think it's called permalink manager Lite. That's the one. So we'll just install that, activate that. Now, before we go on, you might be thinking, why can't I just edit the, the page as it is? Well, we go to edit category and trouble is this is page type is the category page. It's not a normal WordPress page. So all I can really do is play around with this or change the template in Elemental. So that all gets a bit clunky. Whereas what I can do is just create a new page, call it Musicians. And I could say this is a landing page about musicians. And let's assume we had something to sell. We'd have a buy button testimonial. So if we publish that, and then we want this to be both our landing page for, say, travel insurance with a form, click here to so now buy your travel insurance, but then also access the category page, which has got all these sub niches underneath it, so travel insurance for over 60s, etc. So if we go to this URL now, it seems to be working okay. Let's just check all this in incognito, because normally I'd expect a category page instead, because currently we've got two URLs clashing with the same page. So we have this category page here. And yes, that seems to be working. This is the landing page I built for that cluster. Now that might be because we installed the permalink manager plugin. Maybe there've been some WordPress changes, but quite often in the past, you'll get those two pages clashing. So you've got two pages, which both want networthtoday.com slash musicians. So in that case, what I do is I set up a redirect from the category archive page to the landing page I created. And then in the manager light, my landing page might've come up as musicians too and wordpress won't be let, letting me change that by default with permanent link, link manager light i can just go in and set whatever url i want and just delete the two and then the old archive page will redirect to the landing page so the only remaining thing now is you do still want this to function as category archive even though it's your own page that you can change and edit so i'll then generally insert an archive of posts on this page as well normally i design all this nicely in elementor so I can just drag in a posts widget and have basically the human readable landing page at the top that's really salesy and then a long list of posts at the bottom. 